crafters, I am so excited for today's project. I had so much fun making mine. Today we are going to be making DIY cardboard tube nutcrackers. I'm fairly certain this is the most budget friendly DIY nutcracker because for me anyways, I had all these items on hand and if you do have to buy any of them, they're super affordable. Now just because it's cheap to make, don't think that it's gonna be cheesy. It's a good size, it's over two feet tall and they're so easy to customize. So let's talk materials. First, you will need four paper towel tubes, so the longer cardboard tubes, and then you will need 10 toilet paper tubes. You should already have these items because you should be using toilet paper. That'd be kind of weird if you're not. So just make sure to hang on to those cardboard rolls and save up a bunch to make your nutcracker. Then I'm going to be using hot glue because I already have a hot glue gun on hand and I think that is the easiest and fastest and strongest way to hold it all together. But another option is to use Elmer's liquid glue. You can pick up a bottle for just a dollar at Dollar Tree. We will also need some masking tape. Next, we'll need some construction paper. You're going to need four sheets in your main color, so I'm going with red. You'll need four sheets of black, two sheets of white or beige, whatever you want for the pants, and then one sheet that is either gold or orange or yellow to make the little shoulder pad ruffle things. You'll see what I'm talking about. You will need two ornaments for the hands. These I got a big two from Hobby Lobby, but you can pick up a pack of about seven of these for just a dollar at the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use a little bit of black and white paint, but you could swap that out and instead use markers or highlighters. If you're going with paint, I highly recommend the 50 cent apple barrel ones at Walmart. Best deal, great paint, I love this stuff, use it all the time. Then a couple items you'll probably have on hand where you will need eight cotton balls and some scrap cardboard. You may want some extra decorative doodads, I'm gonna use a metallic sharpie in here as well, and anything else you want to customize it. To make the head of our nutcracker, you have two options. One is to do paper mache, which I like that look the best, but I'll show you an option that doesn't involve the paper mache. So if you're doing the paper mache, you will also need a balloon and some flour and paper scraps. If you have to buy every single item on this material list, the total cost will be $10.50 if you get everything from Dollar Tree and then the 50 cent paints from Walmart. But odds are a lot of these items, like the flour and cotton balls, you'll already have on hand. In my case, I had everything on hand. But if you don't have stuff on hand and you need to buy materials, a lot of times for just a dollar, the materials will be enough for several nutcrackers. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to DIYing. We're going to start this DIY by taking nine of our toilet paper tubes and cutting them open. So I'm just slicing them long ways and we're gonna turn these into the body in the hat of our nutcracker. Once I've cut them open, I'm going to go along the whole length of it and fold it backwards. So right now it's rolled into a tube and we're kind of rolling it in the opposite direction. This makes it a little flatter so it's not such a tight curve, but it'll still be able to curve just a little bit. And I'm gonna repeat this process with all nine of my toilet paper tubes. Then I'm going to divide my tubes into three groups. The first two groups of three are going to make the body and the other three are going to make the hat. Now the white tubes actually ended up being a little bit different in size, so try to use tubes that are all the same size. Now we're going to join these to make one large cylinder. I'm gonna get a piece of masking tape and just line up the ends, overlapping them just a little bit and then taping them. And I like to make my tape pieces pretty long so I can get the tape to wrap around both sides and hold it in place really securely. Once I've connected my first two, I will connect my third one in the same manner. And then I will connect the ends of my first and third one to form one giant cylinder. Once I connect my first three cardboard tubes, I'm going to repeat this process with my second batch. Once I tape them together, I'm going to pause before taping the first and third tube together because I need to size it against the other large cylinder we just made so that way they will fit together nicely. So you can either wrap it around the outside or fit it on the inside. Because my cardboard tubes weren't all the same size, I didn't have enough to wrap around on the outside. So for me, I sized it to the inside of my first large cylinder. And then I took a piece of tape and taped it together. And then I wasn't paying attention and I didn't line up my one shorter tube. So make sure your edges line up well. Once I've got my second large cylinder made. I'm going to nest them together and use a bunch of tape to tape them together. So I just did a bunch of little pieces of tape on the outside and then I did a bunch of little pieces of tape on the inside of the tube. You can even go in with some Elmer's glue or like I did, I later on added a little bit of hot glue just to hold it together really securely. But once these two are connected, that will be the body of our nutcracker. Then we're going to repeat this process one more time with our three remaining tubes and this is going to make the hat. This doesn't have to match the size of the body. This can be whatever size you want. So these three tubes lined up together nicely and I just taped them up. Now at this point you have to decide whether you want to do the round paper mache head or if you want to skip the paper mache step. 
So this is what it'll look like if we do the paper mache head. We'll have a round head. And of course, if you wanna avoid paper mache, you could also find a ball at the Dollar Tree. Or another option is to make your body, your head, and your hat all connected as one giant cylinder. So you would need three more toilet paper tubes to fill it in. And it'll look a little something like this once you decorate it. That's totally an option, but personally, I like the round face better. So I'm going to do some paper mache. I'm going to over inflate a balloon and then keep letting air out so that way it ends up being a nice round shape until it's the size that I want my head to be. Then I'll tie my balloon off and get my paper mache materials ready. I've got some scrap paper here that I'm going to tear off into strips. And then for my paper mache mixture, I'm going to do a one to one ratio of flour to water. Mix that up and then dip your strips of paper into the paper mache mixture and start covering your balloon. Make sure you leave plenty of overlap between your paper strips so that way your paper mache structure is nice and strong. And then once it dries all the way, I will do a second layer of paper mache so that it is nice and sturdy. While that dries, we're going to work on the body. We need to cut out a circle from our scrap cardboard so you can either trace around your body cylinder or you can use a compass to get a nice circle. Cut out the circle and test the fit. Like me, you may need to do some more trimming. Once we get a nice fit, we're going to use masking tape to secure it to the bottom of our cylinder. Then repeat this process to make the top of the hat. Now it's time to add some color to our nutcracker and we're going to do this by covering it in the construction paper. I'm going to attach my paper with hot glue and I've also got a paper slicer to help me out here. Since one sheet of construction paper is too small to go all the way around the body, I'm going to use two pieces of paper and I'm going to make the overlap happen at the sides. And then later we'll attach the arms and it'll cover up those seams. Cut your paper to the height of your cylinder and then glue it onto the body. Cut out a second piece of paper and trim it so that way it is the right length to go around just half of the cylinder and then glue that onto there as well. Next, we're going to cover the hat with black construction paper. I'm going to start by tracing my hat onto the construction paper and then I'm going to cut around it, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of space and cut bigger than my pencil mark. Then I'm going to cut tabs all the way around the circle and I'm going to use my pencil mark as a guide. So I'm only cutting my tabs in as far as the pencil mark. Then I will glue this to the top of my hat and then glue the tabs down all along the side. Finish covering the hat, I'm going to cut out a piece of black construction paper that is the right height for my hat and wrap it around. Now again, one sheet isn't enough to go all the way around, so for this one, I'm going to put a small piece on there and then use a full size piece and wrap it around as far as I can go. And we'll just leave those seams on the back where it won't really be noticed. So I glue my first one on and then glue my second one on there and my hat is all together. Now we're going to cover the paper towel tubes to create our arms and legs. For the legs, I'm going to cover the top part with my cream colored paper. This is going to be like the pants. Just make sure you come down the same length with your construction paper on both legs so that way your pant legs aren't different heights. Then I'm going to cut out two matching pieces of black construction paper to be the ankles of the boots. Again, this is just a basic rectangle I'm cutting out that I've sized to be whatever height I wanted and it's big enough to wrap around the base of the leg. To finish the legs, we need to add some feet. Now, if you followed my material list, you will have a 10th toilet paper tube that you can cut in half for this. I forgot to, so I'm going to cut a little bit of length off of my arms. And you'll probably want to cut the arms down a little bit anyways, so that way your nutcracker looks proportionate. And since I'm already cutting that off and don't have a 10th toilet paper tube on hand, I'm going to use that excess to make my feet. Now these feet pieces also need to be covered in construction paper. So we're gonna start by tracing the tube onto a piece of black paper. And then like we did for the top of the hat, we're gonna cut wider than our pencil mark. And then we're gonna cut tabs into our pencil line. This will attach to the front and we will just glue the tabs down all around to hold it in place. Then we will need to cut out a rectangle of black construction paper to wrap around the foot. Once I get that piece glued on there, we can look at it against our leg and notice how it kind of sticks out a little strange. So to make it fit better against the leg, I'm going to cut out a curve. I don't measure this. I just kind of squish it down and cut out a roughly curved shape. And as long as you give it a little bit of a curve, it'll help it fit against the leg better. Then I'm gonna load that up with hot glue and attach it to the front of my leg. You may need to touch up with the glue or pull it in place while it cools so that way it fits on there well. I also find it easier to make the cut and it also just looks better if you make this piece longer versus shorter. 
I finished up my second leg and then it was time to work on the arms. To start with the arms, we're going to wrap them much like we did with the legs. Just we're going to do red for the top length and then make cuffs out of black construction paper. Our arms will also need something to cover the top of the shoulders. So for this, I'm going to use some orange construction paper. I've got a mug that I'm going to trace a large circle onto my paper with. And then I'm going to center my cardboard tube roughly in the center of that circle and trace that out. Then I cut out the larger circle. Then using my center circle as a guide, I'm going to cut out little triangles to create little tabs all the way around my circle. Once the tabs are cut out, I'm going to round the edges to make them curved. Again, I just kind of did this roughly. If you have one of those corner rounders, like for scrapbooking, that would make this go so much faster. I do have one, I just wasn't sure where it was at. So I just did it the old fashioned way by hand with a pair of scissors. Once it is cut out all the way, we can attach it to our nutcracker by putting glue on the tabs and folding them down the length of the arm. I like to first do opposite sides and then do in between those and then just kind of go around and do every other one so that way they overlap nicely. To finish the arms, I'm going to glue an ornament to the very bottom. Now my ornaments, because they're just plastic shatterproof ones, they have a seam. So I like to line up the seam with the seam of where my paper overlaps on the side of the arm. Then I went back to the body of my nutcracker and I cut out some strips of black paper to create a belt. Again, since I needed two pieces to go all the way around, I made sure that the overlap seam occurred on the left and right sides exactly opposite of each other so that way they will be covered up when we attach the arms. It was time to revisit the head of our nutcracker. So after doing two layers of paper mache, it was fully dry. So I cut out my balloon and removed it. And then we need to add a nose and paint this. I forgot to add the nose before I painted, but it turns out nicer if you add the nose first. Cut out a triangle of cardboard. And this one I made way too big. It looks better if you go smaller. This nutcracker ends up with a rather, rather large nose. So just be mindful of what size you're making your nose. Anyways, once we cut out a triangle, I'm going to use that as a guide to trace and cut out three more triangles so I have a total of four cardboard triangles and then so it sits nicely against the round nutcracker head I'm going to cut out a curve again I just kind of rough this and once I cut my first one out I trace that onto my other triangles and cut them out so they all match and then lastly I hot glued them all together then I had some scrap cardstock that I cut out into a strip that was long enough to cover the front and bottom of the nose and then I hot glued that on there so that way I can paint it and not have the open cardboard pieces once your nose is all assembled, glue it to the front of your nutcracker head. After you've added the nose, then it is time to paint. So for painting, I just got a little bit of white paint that I added a drop of brown to. And of course you can make your nutcracker whatever shade that you want it to be, just by mixing up a little bit of paint. And once it's mixed up, then I'm going to slather this all over my nutcracker's face. Once the paint has dried, it's time to put it all together. I will quickly note that I do some decorating later on that might be a little easier to do before assembling your nutcracker, but it's totally up to you whether you add more decorations on now or whether you wait until it's all assembled. Pretty straightforward, this is just a hot glue it all together and I hot glued my head on kind of crooked and I had on very crooked, so I ended up popping those off and repositioning those later on, but I just used the hot glue and of course you could use hot glue or Elmer's to assemble it together. And then once the body, head, and hat are all connected, I'm going to attach the feet. Now, very important before you add the feet, do a balance test and make sure that everything will sit flat. I ended up needing to trim down my legs a little bit more so that way my nutcracker would actually balance and not be about to fall over. But once the feet were attached, I then glued the arms on and the arms, I made sure to point the seams inward so that way they were all covered by where we attached it. At this point, it looked both super cute and super creepy. So let's go ahead and add some more of those details. I took my cotton balls and I unrolled them. And this takes a little bit of practice, but just unroll your cotton balls as best you are able. And then I tore mine in half because that was the perfect length for my size nutcracker. Make sure to set one cotton ball half aside to be the beard of the nutcracker. And then I just use some hot glue to attach it all the way around. Then it's time to give this nutcracker a face. I took an Expo marker and this random pen I had. They had the perfect size circles to make the eyes. A good idea is to trace your objects onto some paper first to make sure you like the way they look and then do it on your nutcracker to make sure everything's the right size. But once I've traced my large circles onto my nutcracker and I like the way they're positioned, I'm going to use some white paint to paint the eyes. I'm also going to trace out and paint the mouth. For this, you're going to trace a rectangle on the bottom of the mouth, and then another rectangle lined up directly beneath it at the top of the nutcracker body. 
And at this point, it looked like something from a horror movie, but I promise that it ends up very cute and Christmassy and not scary. While the white paint was drying, I traced on the shape of his mustache and his eyebrows. You, of course, can cut out a little stencil template to trace so that way they match. I just freehanded it, but honestly, creating a little template for yourself so that way they match will make this so much easier because it is a little tricky to get them to look even. You do want them to look even so you don't end up with a lopsided nutcracker face. But once you get it traced on there, just use some black paint to fill it in. As an aside, as you observe my painting skills here, this is why I don't do winged eyeliner. Once my eyes were dry, I took a smaller pen and traced the circle out to be the pupils for my nutcracker's eyes, and I painted those in black. And while that dried, I got out a red Sharpie to create the teeth. So I started by tracing out my rectangle shape, and then I divided the top and bottom into four equal sections. And then I just added a little curve at the tops and bottoms to create like kind of the gums of the teeth so that way he has a nice toothy grin. I do feel like he needs a visit from Hermie the Elf though. You can also add some color to the eyes using a marker or a highlighter. So I had this blue highlighter that I just carefully went around and added a little bit of color to the eyes. And then lastly, I got a little dot of white paint to add a little highlight to both of the eyes. Once the paint was completely dry, I used a soft eraser to remove any stray pencil marks. Then I took a metallic sharpie and I added some extra detail. So I added a belt buckle, I added some little dots for cufflinks, and I added some decorations on the front of the body and on the front of the boots. With my first nutcracker, I tried to add a fleur de lis. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Anyways, you know the little flower thing? I tried to add that on the front of the boots, but it ended up looking very sad. So I just turned it into circles because that was a little easier to fill in. At this point, I also hot glued my last cotton ball piece to the front to create a beard. And then I had this old tubing that's basically just trash that I saved and I hot glued that onto the top of his hat and I used my metallic sharpie to color that in just to add a little extra decoration. Finally, my nutcracker was completely done. And look at how festive he looks. Now, I will say the big nose definitely made this one not quite as cute as the first one, but you know, nutcrackers can come in all shapes and sizes just like people, so we'll let them be. But for very cheap, using items I already had on hand, I was able to make this fun Christmas decoration that is over two feet tall, so pretty good size. And now all that's left is figuring out where I am going to put them. So now I want to hear from you. What did you guys think of my nutcracker that I made? Are you going to be trying this project? Let me know in the comments below. This is such a fun project to make. And while you're at it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already one of my crafters. But thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone is having a Merry Christmas season, and I'll see you on my next video. Happy crafting! All right, just a little bonus. As I was working on this, my sister was not seeing how it was all going to come together. So naturally, because I love her so much, I had to send progress pictures. So this project's a great way to show someone that you really care about them and really hope they have nightmares all Christmas season long.